This is Paloma Press, news that matters to the Wildcat community. I'm Alessandra Pimentel. And I'm Severa Vakil. We begin with an emotional story after the loss of one of our own. Friday, January 20th, Paloma held a memorial service for student Anaya Edwards, who was lost in a car accident the previous weekend. The memorial was a chance for Anaya's family and friends to express their feelings, leave messages on cards, offer support, and grieve with each other. Many wore red for Anaya's favorite color. Some shared stories about the impact Anaya made at Paloma and in their personal lives. She was, she was very inspirational, such high energy. She, she always talked about her future, biggest smile on her face. She was just so positive. She was just such a good person. Like She was just a good friend in general. We would always just talk about random, just things that didn't even matter. We was just enjoying being kids, you know, just always having a good laugh with each other. It was it was always love between us. We always cared for each other, always laughed with each other, always were there for each other. Anaya was an active senior involved in many organizations, including the Black Student Union, JROTC, and dance team. Students were able to participate in the memorial during both lunches. Many of Anaya's family members attended, including her mother, siblings, and father. Man, they don't come no, no realer. And it, it's just gonna be a loss, man, to the world. People just don't understand how time is short. Love your people, love your family. Go say that now. A video of the memorial will be presented to the family as a gift from the school. So Severa, you were at the memorial, how was that? It was beautiful to see the family and friends being able to grieve together. Turning to club news on Monday, January 23rd, Paloma's robotics team, the Superbots, became league champions. Paloma press reporter Elijah Laguna joined the team during practice for the next competition. Paloma's robotics team beat out 14 other teams from the district's high schools to become this year's league champions. The team of five students have to design and build their robot, then compete in matches throughout the region. Team advisor and teacher Michael Wilson says this year the team is the best team Paloma has ever had. Every match we do, we get better. And so we, we plan to just keep doing exactly what we're doing. We're ref constantly refining our code, uh, continuing to, to practice to make sure that we can score those elements uh, every time. And we're finding new ways to shave seconds off of our meets so that we can get the maximum number of points possible. Freshman Eric Ilagin joined the team to build robots, but he says the competition part was a surprise. Once he started competing with other schools, it made the experience even better. The human player is like tasked with using these cones and dropping them into this triangle, which is called a substation. You put two and two or more in there, and the robot will grab it, will grab the cones in there and place it onto the poles, like over by the field. For a robotics team to win a competition, they have to place cones on a pole in a limited amount of time. The team meets after school three days a week for technical training and practice. For Paloma Press, I'm Elijah Laguna. This weekend, the Superbots will compete in their first qualifying round, and then later this month, they'll face off with schools from other robotics team leagues. Paloma staff is nominating and choosing Wildcats for Student of the Month. Paloma Press reporter Nicole Liu introduces us to the latest winner. With the new year and new semester, senior Sally Orozco was chosen as our school's January winner for Student of the Month. honestly thought I was in trouble at first when Dr. Tomasian um, calls me up to her office, but I was very surprised. I was very excited. I didn't expect it, and I was just very grateful that I got chosen. Orozco thinks she won the award because of her consistent good grades and being on the wrestling team. Student of the Month is an award that comes from the Paris Unified School District to honor students from high schools who are nominated by school staff. Her seventh period biosustainability teacher, Maria Schmidt, is one of the staff members who nominated her. Oh, it makes me very proud of her. She works very, very hard, and so it's always nice to see a student be recognized for all their hard work. Orozco says her key to succeeding with a demanding academic and sports schedule is effective time management. For Paloma Press, I'm Nicole Liu. Back to you in the studio. Congratulations, Sally, on being a student of the month. On Friday, January 27th, the Key Club hosted its eighth annual Proving Grounds talent show in the theater. The show featured about 20 contestants from several regional high schools competing in a sold-out theater. 
Money raised from ticket sales goes to support programs for children in trauma care. Paloma's own dance group, The Exclusives, took home the Viewer's Choice Award with an energetic hip-hop performance that lasted about four minutes long. Temesco Canyon singer Elisel Tan won the judges vote for best performance with her cover of a Tori Kelly song. Paloma has a new head football coach. Paloma Press reporter Jaden Kelly found out what the new coach has planned for next season. PE teacher and current girls track coach Juan Marita is Paloma's new varsity football head coach. Marita has a tough job ahead taking the team beyond last year's CIF playoffs, but Marita says it's a challenge she's ready for. Marita brings 27 years of football coaching experience to the job. He previously coached at Paloma from 2009 to 2017 as an offensive coordinator. This is Marita's first job as a head coach, and he takes over a team that is league champions, won the Menifee Bowl, and made the second round of CIF playoffs. Even though the season's months away, Marita says he's already started getting the team ready. And we've already started working out. Uh, we'll do a couple mornings. We have the seventh period class, which I also have track with, so we have uh, like 150 athletes out here going through workouts. Uh, we'll do a Monday after school lift, and then starting at the end of February, we'll, do, we'll start our one night a week football practices, and that'll go until May, and that's when we actually start like spring practices. Marita says the ultimate football goal is to win a state championship, but he adds the greater purpose for him is developing athletes to have core values, discipline, worth ethic, leadership, and having fun. For Paloma Press, I'm Jaden Kelly. Back to you in the studio. The computer science class recently received a National Diversity Award for bringing more girls into the subject. Reporter Ariana Maldonado and photojournalist Victoria Gonzalez show us the award-winning class. On January 17th, College Board recognized Paloma Valley's computer science classes for the effort to recruit more girls. I joined instructor Michael Wilson's computer science class to get a better look at how it's going. Wilson's computer science classes have a mix of girls and boys learning computer science skills. In his fifth period class, there's more boys than girls, but that's changing. Both uh, engineering and computer science for a long time, it's, it's always been very male dominated. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason for that. Girls are really good at this stuff, and for some reason they just don't pursue this field. And so for a long time we have been really striving to get more girls to sign up for these classes. Computer science was recognized for inclusion of girls by the College Board, a nonprofit organization started more than 100 years ago to connect high school students to college. Wilson says any thoughts about girls not being able to compete against boys in computer science is a myth. And I would actually argue that a lot of the times the girls in my classes are better than the boys. Don't let the boys know. <laughs> but it is true. And so they need, to be, um, they need to be taking these classes to tap into that potential. Honestly, it feels kind of powerful. I feel like I'm leading a, a kind of movement of more women moving into computer science and STEM in general. But Guy adds, she definitely sees computer science in her future, and she was surprised. One, that computers are kind of dumb. You, they can't do anything unless they're told to. And two, that you can make a computer do almost anything. If I want it to go fetch a sol soda from a fridge, I can code it to do that. How far are you going to take computer science? I'm going to take computer science into my career. I'm thinking of going into cybersecurity. Wilson says the word is shared by Paloma's counseling department for encouraging more girls to get into computer science. I'm Mariana Maldonado with photojournalist Victoria Gonzalez. Back to you in the studio. We thank you for watching. For more in-depth coverage of our school community, look for the Paloma Press newspaper. It comes out in both digital and print versions. The latest edition of the newspaper was released on January 24th in an email from advisor Andrew Paulson. We leave you today with the sights and sounds of the powerful Santa Ana winds that blew through Paloma in late January. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you next time on Paloma Press.